The weapon of choice of Michael Myers is a simple but effective kitchen knife that has had many uses as it can be seen on the blade. However, something you might not know is that the blade also contains another hidden detail that is hard to see in game. The kitchen knife is full of fingerprints. The fact that the developers put this detail that is so hard to see in game yet is there is just proof of how much love the developers put into this DLC. And this is not the only example of cool little references that you can find about him. For example, did you know that the pronouns of Michael Myers in the Adept Achievement are it? This is because Michael Myers, according to the movies, is the pure embodiment of evil and evil is genderless. In fact, in the original Halloween movie credits, Michael Myers is referred to as The Shape, which is why he is named like that in Dead by Daylight. Finally, the Adept Achievement also contains a very cool reference. As you may know, all Adept Achievements show the default weapon of the killer or their power. In the case of Michael Myers, it shows his weapon multiple times in rapid succession. This is a direct reference to the iconic Halloween movie poster with the same type of design. Now, talking about iconic design, did you know that two of the perks in the Halloween DLC have an alternative, non-licensed version of them? These icons were used temporarily for platforms that did not have the Halloween license, like the PS4 and Xbox. This is what is currently happening to the Stranger Things DLC as well. But that's not all. Some of the perks had a different name during development, like Soul Survivor, which was named Last Survivor according to the Spotlight video. Last Survivor is the first one. Last Survivor is... In a way there is another perk that might have had a different name during development as well, but it might be a placeholder. There's a file called Playing with Food, which means that this could be an old remnant of a test name. Another very curious detail about a perk is from Play with Your Food. As you may already know, most of the perks in the game have a small flavor text on them. Man wouldn't do that. This isn't a man. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. In the case from Play with Your Food, the quote that this perk contains is not from the original movie, but the extended scenes instead. The extended scenes were introduced to increase the length of the movie, so this means that if you watch the original one, you would not hear this line. You fooled them, haven't you, Mike? But not me. Thanks to user FrankWest21CP from Reddit for discovering this amazing fact. Now, some people might already know this, but I thought it would be interesting to include. As you may know, most of the times the survivors and killers appear on the promotional artwork of the DLC. In the case of the Halloween one, it looks like it's just Michael Myers, but if you take a look at the reflection of the knife, you can actually see Laurie being intimidated by him. And honestly, who isn't? A lot of people love the Mori animation of Michael Myers, but what a lot of people don't know is that Michael Myers was the first ever killer to have two different Mori animations. And it makes sense. The first Mori animation starts when you lift up the survivor from the floor, which is achieved by using a Mori offering or to another means like Devour Hope. The other animation comes out when you kill a survivor using a tombstone add-on, and instead of lifting up the survivor from the floor, Michael Myers directly takes them from behind. Michael Myers is one of the four killers that have a different Mori, the others being Clown, Plague and Twins. Now something a lot of people might not know as well is that Michael Myers used to not have any animation when in tier 3 in first person. This meant that while you were playing Michael, the knife was still on the bottom unlike now, where he has a new animation in first person that fits his third person model way better. Another thing that was changed from Michael Myers tier 3 is that in the past you were able to stalk on tier 3, which didn't give you any stalk progress, but it had a use, which was to try and find the white silhouettes of survivors far away. It even had a special UI border, which showed his power in red instead of white. And since we're talking about Michael Myers' power, let's talk about the power icon itself. In the live game, Michael Myers' power shows his iconic mask, but have you noticed the differences between the tiers? Each level you get, Michael Myers becomes more revealed, which is another amazing reference to how he actually was in the movies, where he was hidden in the shadows, and as the movie progressed, he came out more and more. 
Something you might not know is that during the development of Michael Myers, he had Roman numerals instead representing the tier he was. Another thing that was changed from the development of Myers was the sound effect of stalking. In the developer build of Michael Myers, the stalking sound used to sound like this. Which is slightly different than the live sound we have. But what is more interesting is that originally he had completely different stalking sounds, as you can hear here. And if that's not all, Michael Myers used to have a completely different sound effect when leveling up. Apparently, there are some audio files in the developer build named Stock Level Up, which sound like this. These sound effects are, in my opinion, worse than the official live release, so I am glad that they were removed. What I didn't like removed is the special sound effect that played to a survivor when you were stalked and Myers was close to leveling up, which you can hear here. This sound effect was removed shortly after his release and to this day, I honestly don't understand why. Another audio that can be found in the files, but nobody knows what the use is, is this unused stock tear up sound effect. As you can hear, Myers has a lot of different sound effects, but I believe all of these fall very short when compared to this completely unused chase music for Michael Myers. You heard me right, Myers has a completely unused chase music in the developer build that you probably never heard before. Take a listen. Now, in order for this chase music to play, you need to do something very specific. First of all, only a survivor can hear this part of the chase music. Second of all, Myers has to be standing still. And third of all, you have to come very close to Myers in order to hear it. And I mean extremely close. It seems like the way it's programmed in this version of Michael Myers is that it's a very close proximity chase music. Now to be fair, I personally like the fact that this is not in the live game, because I believe Michael Myers' chase music is one of the most simple yet scary songs in the entire game, but even then, this finding was really cool, and I have to thank Crunch for discovering this, who has amazing videos showcasing the DVD beta and more, so check him out. And talking about checking out, have you watched my removed features from maps video? If you didn't and you're enjoying this one, why don't you check it out after finishing watching this one? In that vid, I talked about how the shack was a spawnable structure in Haddonfield and that we could see it in the spotlight of the DLC for a brief moment. Well, here is the Haddonfield shack, something I thought I would never be able to show you. Could you imagine having this structure in the live game? Haddonfield would have been way more horrible than it was now. If you take a look at the sky, you might also notice how it's a little different from the Haddonfield that we had, as it was way more blue in the end result. But this is not the oldest Haddonfield version. In the first ever Halloween DLC teaser, the wallpaper inside the house of Michael is a different color from the one in the final version. Even the flooring looks a bit different. Also, Michael's knife could have been a little different as well, but I cannot confirm this and I think this might be the reflection of the light making it look different. Now, I will leave this footage of me exploring old Haddonfield for those of you that are interested, as well as three fast small facts I have already talked in my past videos. So if you enjoyed this one, I would really appreciate a like. Also comment which killer you would like me to do a video on next. Anyways, this is a fact I previously talked about in a video of mine, but Michael Myers' prestige outfit was way more bloodier in the PTB icons than in the release. Another fact was the headless bug 
which lasted for a while that allowed some Myers players to play without a head. This was a cosmetic glitch that was quickly fixed. Finally, Michael Myers' knife appears to be stuck in the table of Dead Dog Saloon, but this might be just our reuse of assets. And that's about it, have a nice day!